Hello, good morning. We are all here to discuss now December 13 question paper. So this, of course, for all the IFRS learners, experts, users, we are talking about ACCA London Diploma in IFRS December 2013 question paper. Very interesting. This time, ACC Institute had been very prompt, and the exam happened on 10 December, and the paper was on their website on 11 December. Appreciable. Congratulations to ACC London. As I always say, the IFRS paper of ACC London is the best in the whole world. It is in the type of case study method whereby one really learns the practical aspects of IFRS. Going forward from that, the answer paper is yet to come. So whatever I am telling today is obviously on my own knowledge and knowledge is always endless. So in particular my comments hopefully will be useful for the future students and those who appeared this time will have a lot of important tips from this. As usual, our almost 100 students appeared mainly from Mumbai, India and some of them from various other countries. First of all, overall comments before I go to question by question. This was perhaps the most easy paper in last May I say all the years, because this exam started in 2001 and this is perhaps the easiest paper. Secondly, this paper can be called difficult in some respects, but those who had done past eight papers, for them it was a cakewalk. Why? Because I would say almost all, almost all the questions were repeated. If at all one has to somehow pick and choose the exception, it was the theory of 5 marks on deferred tax, which was something new. Otherwise, if one sees the whole nature of the paper, and if I make overall comments again, question 1 was SOFP. Balance sheet preparation consolidation and which obviously the students find it far more easier than SOCI. Leo said SOCI plus SOCI E. Secondly, the adjustment in the question papers were very standard. There was fair valuation as usual. There was No impairment at all. So that calculation make, becomes very easy. If one looks at the inventory adjustments, trade receivable and payable adjustments, they were standard and as usual. And if I pick up point by point, the adjustment for given under note number 3, that is Beta's land under revaluation model, which was okay, interestingly taken by me in the class itself and also in my online lectures. And it was a simple copy of June 12 balance sheet. And since it was a simple copy of June 12 balance sheet adjustment, for everybody it amount to a very, very simple thing. I will 
refer you to the note number 2 of June 12, question 1 and December 13, the question paper which we are referring to, question 1, note 3 are dicto copy. Then if I go to adjustment for note number 7 of long term borrowings, this adjustment has become so standard including the interest rate 8 and 10 percent, including the percentages, including the values, everything is same for many papers. Then what is tricky? Well, what is tricky is the original effective rate given and the loan was interest free. So a slight variation. But if you see our online model, that variation has also been covered. Then let us talk, talk up to note 7, which again is a cash flow hedge. And cash flow hedge has been asked twice. Once it was asked in June 11 paper as a separate question, question 2, transaction 1, the fuel example. And that example and this example has no difference. In that it was purchase, that is imports. And here it was exports. Barring that, the treatment was same and the cash flow hedge was to be treated in a similar fashion by taking it to OCI. May I refer you to the IFRS 9 para 7.1 appendix B. Same adjustment. Only one has to re remember that we are not preparing OCI, we are giving balance sheet treatment and therefore we need to show financial asset and the corresponding impact obviously goes into the OCE. Then if one comes to the next item, question 2, again it was a similar situation. The catch in that question 2a is for a quite some time one gets a feeling that it is a question on financial instruments and if one reads thoroughly then one realizes that it relates to adjusting event and non-adjusting event. So when we analyze that particular question we will touch base upon that and my every time which I say that whenever you write a question read the first line, read the last line and then read the question and those who have done that, those students were smilingly came out of the exam hall when I met them at the World Trade Center in Mumbai because there was a very clear cut indication given. You do not need to quantify amounts which are only shown in the notes to financial statements. So in fact it was an 8 mark question and if somebody has read that note and realized that it is a non-adjusting event, it won't require even after reading and grasping, not even two minutes to complete this question. Come to question 2b. Absolutely, again copy. If I, if I may bring to your notice, the HFS examples have been asked again. They have been asked in June 12 as well as June 11. So, may I refer to the question 3b of... June 12, 3B of June 12, if you see goodwill, property, plant, equipment and net current asset. Now the only addition which has been done here is patent centred mark that is intangible assets and I distinctly remember which all the students vouch for it is that I had told them which are the points on which the question is not yet asked and broadly speaking where does IFRS 5 apply? Simple. Because one, the standard itself starts with the wording non-current asset. Therefore, all current assets are not to be considered. And even within that non-current assets, there are six exclusions. So what is left other than goodwill? PPE and intangible assets. And I had said this very clearly. Questions yet to ask. And I had said intangible asset. And very rightly they had asked patent centred marks. So 
a pretty pretty you know i mean i don't want to call myself astrologer but i mean it is a definitive trend that every time they test the conceptual knowledge of a student has the student understood the question clear cut we will take another trick of that when we discuss about it that not withdrawing from a particular market sector what does it mean All right then we come to the question 2c which is the sale and operating lease back and those who have done it in fact everybody did it who sir i met and then they remembered and said this was also asked in december 10 question 5 if 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 i may bring to your notice december 10 was a completely lease focused question and uh, here we will find that the question number which was asked december 10 was typically on lease and the lease question paper clearly indicated that and let me let me bring that to your notice because whenever i have taught leads i have taken the december 10 question paper first and we take the three varieties and when you take the three varieties you will immediately understand that question 5c exactly was on the same lines as usual a slight variation instead of profit there it, here it is a loss and that loss is nothing but a reverse incentive so again another repeat of december 10 question 5c then i come to question 3a yes that is where a little surprise came up with the five marks theory obviously those who had understood conceptually they could write but that was something new not a repeat of past and then when comes to question 5b sorry the question 3b which talks about the deferred tax practical again we will realize that this is nothing but simply picked up from question 5b of december 09 the point number 2 of that holding selling to subsidiary and unrealized profits was the only catch in december 9 paper and same is the catch here also and as far as point number 1 and 2 are concerned they were the simple calculations on the similar lines what have been done during december 9 paper so unrealized gains and losses on the revaluation of investment oci item this was the december 9 first item there was oci and the advance from customer was a copy book types then we go to question 4 now this is again another repetition and if you see word by word if i may say uh, the question paper of june 10 yeah i i still have this paper june 10 paper has a pp question as question 5 and which talks about roof as a separate component accounting it also talks about car parking which was not to be considered then it talks about the relocation opening ceremony cost when i read the uh, june 10 question 5 and read december 13 question 4 i even can't see the difference again borrowing cost capitalization let's go one by one they have talked about purchased and leveling of land which is to be taken under construction employee cost is given per month same thing overheads direct are given then there is a car parking income given cost of relocating given opening ceremony cost given roof has a 20 years replacement even in that question it was 20 years replacement and the 40 years overall life and the even the borrowing cost was at 8% uh, the demolition cost is given uh, not the borrowing cost but the de demolition cost is given for which present value is to be taken so again and the loan is also given borrowing cost at a percentage 
So again, and calculate the carrying value on March 13, September 13. Luckily, the whole thing is starting from October. So there is nothing. And the last, that is question 4B, was another, shall I say, a cake on the platter. That is one of the simplest example of the share-based payment. The question was on options and the question was related to the incentives as well as share price, the market conditions to be ignored. And if I may remind you, this question has also come in and was taken both in our online lectures as well as it is asked in the past papers. So net net, those who have attended the online lectures and done perfectly, net net, those who have done the past question papers perfectly, for them the paper was a simple repeat. And when I say simple repeat, I mean so much of the repeat that really speaking there was hardly anything left. So may I draw your attention to question number 4b. Word by word on 1st October 11 Omega granted share options to 200 senior executives and, and I, I might as well uh, compare this with the paper which has been asked a few years back you will realize that this is simply, simply, simply another copy which was linked to nothing but the standard ESOP problems of incentive based ESOPs. Um, net net, the paper was easy. Net net, the paper had hardly any tricks. So then, what happens in such cases for the students? A simple thing happens is, Husserl does even simple mistakes can be in trouble. Why? Because obviously, I mean, in an easy paper, one cannot afford to do simple mistakes. Let's go to the ESOP point. And ESOP point is concerned. The columns which are given fair value of omega shares and the option fair value is exactly same as what has been given in December 9 paper. And if one looks at the ESOP question on the lines of past papers, then one will also realize that there is uh, um, the paper which was June 13, which also had ESOP giving share price and the fair value options. And if I may link it to even one more paper, which was further almost, I mean, I would say, fortunately, they have not repeated figures. If you leave aside the figures, completely taken on the lines of, uh, look at, June 12 paper, question 2b, again they have given the share price and the option fair price. Now, may I expect some therefore, some big marks this time, I am sure some people who have really done well, they would score even 85-90 marks. And, and, and I believe so that we are going to have some kind of a, in terms of overall marks, great result. I also expect to have higher marks overall because generally people were getting the marks in the range of 55 to 65. That is what the majority experience is. That is in past, whenever people attend such a paper, the majority falls in that. But this time I hope there will be many people who will be Scoring the marks which are above 70. And uh, apart from that, yeah, here is that paper. And uh, may I draw your attention to June 11 paper where question 4, transaction 1 
talks about the cumulative profits range and here also there is also cumulative profit range that time on 1st april 9 omega granted option to 20 senior executive here there are say 200 senior executives and june 11 exactly copy book question has been asked all right now let's go to a question by question analysis 